Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Uh, we'll start with a little bit of news from the SEC's teleconference this morning. Every coach meets with the media for about 10 minutes on the teleconference. A lot of it is not all that impactful, but uh, one question was brought up by Scott Rabelais today of the advocate to Brian Kelly uh, because of something that Brian Kelly had said earlier in the call saying when we get John Emery back. So Scott Revely said, well, is is he available for the game? You mentioned uh, John Emery. Uh, what would you say his status is for the game? Unavailable. And that answers that. Um, so John Emery not available for the game against Florida State. I can't think of a journey through college quite like John Emery. Because when someone is unavailable throughout a, a large portion of their career due to, like, injury, then you just kind of chalk that up, well, you probably can't count on him because he's, he's hurt all the time. But in this case, John Emery's not hurt. He's ineligible at times and suspended at times and doing an internship instead of practice at times and taking spring away from football to go do academics. And I've been very clear when I talk about John Emery and, and his decision this spring to go do things academically as opposed to being out on the practice field, that's a great decision because we've seen John Emery here for four years now, 19, 20, 21, 22. I don't know that I would forecast a 10-year NFL career for him. Probably going to have to go into the workforce. What's a benefit there? An education. Go do it. Plus, you've been here four years. You don't really need spring football. I was all for that. Still am. I'm a little bit, I don't want to surprised is the word, but it raises my eyebrow and go, oh, he's really not available for the first game? Like, why? And is he available for the second game? Or John Brian Kelly seems to think he's going to come back, but it's just odd that he's away from the team as often as he is for non-injury reasons. But from a football perspective, which is where I spend 98% of my time talking about what goes on between the lines as opposed to what's going on outside of the lines, LSU's running back room is not quite as deep as it was. The good thing it was ridiculously, absurdly, generationally deep with eight scholarship guys. And now you look up and you're four days from your first game and John Emery's not available and Armani Goodwin is, is doubtful for the game. He's not going to play. And you kind of take those two guys off and you realize that Trey Holly is a freshman, probably not going to get a ton of run. And that kind of narrows things down from where LSU can expect production from their running backs. And it's mainly going to be the veterans. Brian Kelly has insisted upon this. He's spoken to it numerous times. The veterans generally separate themselves when it comes to the running back position and should early on in the season. So that's Noah Kane. Josh Williams, and Logan Diggs. Now, Josh Williams has missed some time in fall camp, has been banged up a bit. We're led to believe that he's doing okay. I actually did speak with Frank Wilson today. Um, candidly, I go in there for my weekly assistant coach interview for the pregame show as an LSU employee. I'm not there to uh, for guarantee. I'm not there to break news. I'm there to do a three-minute interview that's recorded for the pregame show and get out of the coach's way so they can go to work. They got pretty busy full schedules. So I'm not there to kick back and grab an iced tea and you know get some inside scoop from the assistants. That's not the purpose of my visit. I'm very upfront when I, when I talk to them. I say, hey, I'm going to come in, three-minute interview, I'll be right out of your way, and that's what happened today. So it wasn't like I sat down and said, hey, what's the deal with Emory? Or like, hey, who's starting a running back on Sunday? Like That's not why I was in there. It's not what I did. I did my three-minute interview. I said, y'all travel safe and go get them this weekend and, and head it out. But one of the things that he did tell me uh, in the interview, because I asked directly, like, y'all got a lot of running backs. Like, what are you going to – how do you coach that? He said, look, I tell them the same thing every day. Our depth chart is etched in sand. Have a good day. You have another good day after that, another good day after that, good things will happen for you. But you have a bad day and you're an old player, doesn't mean the young guy can't take your reps. They know that their playing time is going to hinge on performance. And 
when you have very old players, Noah Kane has played in 38 college games. Josh Williams has been here for five years. Logan Diggs is a third-year college player. Trey Bradford has been to 13 colleges. <laughs> He's been back and forth all over the place. Like When you've got guys that are old, they tend to be a little more mature. I constantly make this comparison because it's front of mind and it's very, very easily related to my audience, but it, I go back to this baseball team. Who are the guys that were saying, it's not really about how much I play. It was Cade Belosa, fifth-year player. It was Hayden Travinsky, fourth-year player. It was Gavin Dugas, older guy. Now, you heard some of that from some of the younger guys as well, but more so from the really old guys. So if... You know, Caleb Jackson rips off a couple of huge plays and is ticked off that he's not playing. That makes a little more sense. He's 18-year-old instead of a 22-year-old Noah Kane. But the older guys are going to play the majority, and they're not going to bicker over playing time. It's just going to be on who produces. Noah Kane, as I mentioned, played in 38 college games over four years. Last year for LSU, averaged five and a half yards per carry. He scored 10 touchdowns. Nothing wrong with that. Logan Diggs last year, Carried the ball 13 times a game for Notre Dame. Over 12 games, he averaged five yards a carry, scored four touchdowns. Josh Williams averaged five and a half yards per carry last year. He scored six touchdowns. I've been, I don't know if critical is the right word. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the wrong word. I've been um, upfront about my feelings on the running back room that I think that LSU's fine at running back. I don't necessarily think they're dynamic. I don't think of Noah Kane as a dynamic player. I don't think of Josh Williams as a dynamic player. And right now, I don't think of Logan Diggs as a dynamic player, although he has busted some long ones for Notre Dame. Game against South Carolina comes to mind. So the good news is that LSU has a good offensive line. They've got a quarterback who is a threat to run the football and you have to account for in your numbers game on defense. And because of that, I think LSU will run the ball fine on Sunday. Do I think there's a chance Caleb Jackson garners more carries as the calendar progresses? I do. Do I think it's going to happen on Sunday? I don't. I think it's Kane for 13 carries. I think it's Williams for 9 carries. I think it's Diggs for 9 carries. I think it's a couple catches for all of them. And... I think in the end, when the dust settles, they run for 4.4 4, 4. 4 a carry. And it's just kind of get what's blocked and move the chains and count on the big plays in this offense to come from Jaden Daniels with his legs, with his arms, and the wide receivers and tight ends that this, this group has. John Emery, to me, is the biggest home run threat of the crew. But by no means did I think here on a Wednesday that when we get to Sunday that John Emery was going to carry the ball 19 times for 176 and three scores. That's not something that I certainly would have envisioned. Could I see him taking a swing pass like he did against Alabama and cutting up field, making a couple of guys miss and going for 40? I could. Could I see him running through some arm tackles and busting into the end zone like he did against Auburn? I could. But Logan Diggs made that play against South Carolina, the same one that, that Emery made against Alabama. Noah Kane can bust an arm tackle from the seven-yard line and get into the end zone. Scored against Florida State last year. All that this news tells me is that the decision on who to play is a little easier for Frank Wilson. I don't think you lose a ton. You just are what you are at the running back spot, which is a competent, veteran, mature group that should know where to be, know how to pass protect, know how to catch the football, and potentially make a couple of plays, but more often than not, get what's there. Just a little bum for John Emery that in his final year of college football, one of the biggest games of the season in its entirety across the country, and certainly of this weekend, he's not available to play. But you hope that he's taking care of everything he needs to off the field. You hope that he's healthy, and you hope that you see him you know, next Saturday against Grambling or whenever the case may be. But if you missed it earlier, uh, Brian Kelly did say to the assembled media on the uh, SEC teleconference, John Emery is unavailable this weekend for play. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.